Good Tuesday evening, everybody, live and direct from House Onik. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with an update on what's going on in the skies overhead for tonight and into tomorrow. This is our video astronomy blog called Skyblog 3. If you've never stopped by before, again, information available at our website, wreg.com slash weather for more. Usually we have the live meteor section just below the frame that I'm in right here. Looking below that, you can see a NASA live feed uh, from what's going on from the International Space Station. Stations. They are flying overhead, and that is something that's uh, really kind of cool to take a look at. The space station at this time, let's take a look and see where they are at this point. They are right over uh, the area just between uh, close to Japan and very far eastern Russia, and they're going to be making their way back over portions of the North Pacific coming in here relatively soon. So what you're looking at when you're seeing all that out there is actually this. This is a great view of what they're seeing on the daylight side of things. You can see a little bit of the uh, space station over on the far side. I believe that's one of the Soyuz crafts over there. You can see the map that shows uh, where they are uh, in the world right now. Again, roughly right over the area close to the North Atlantic. A few of the pictures that they send back from time to time, some really incredible shots. This one of the Aurora in that area area and some of the pictures that you can see uh, down toward the surface as well and another feed that comes in uh, on this side of things doesn't seem to be anything going on right now uh, but that's something again you can take a look at right there. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about this, this comes from the space video section, uh, Amazing Space. If you'd like to take a look at that, the Earth stream or the feed from the ISS, the live stream available here, and great opportunity to see more about what's going on in the space stations overhead. So if you'd like to see that, all you have to do is just search NASA Live ISS feed on YouTube or go to NASA TV, and they should have something there for you as well. So all kinds of neat stuff if you want to take a look and see what's going on there. Deep Space Network, this is something we might feature in the panel beneath us uh, in a little bit. Uh, this is something that where NASA keeps track of the incoming and outgoing transmissions to planetary probes around the solar system. And you can see that information coming or going. If there's delays, what telescope they're using at various locations, including Madrid, Canberra in Australia, the Goldstone telescopes, uh, all this activity out there, which ones are communicating with this time. Uh, currently, the one in Madrid, the number 65 satellite, is communicating with Voyager 1 at approximately 20 billion kilometers away and for a transmission to make its way there and back again takes one and a half days. It's that far away from this part of the solar system. So something to take a look at there. That's the Deep Space Network. If you'd like to see more about this, uh, just search NASA Deep Space Network and you can get tons of information about what's going on out there and how you can learn about what's happening out there in the solar system. Uh, taking a look at what's going on for tonight from timeanddate.com, planets visible uh, in the nighttime sky. Mercury is very close to the sun. It's next to impossible to see at this point. Rises at about 547 just before the sun does, so almost next to impossible to see that. Uh, Venus will be in view before sunrise at about 428 in the morning in the eastern skies. Mars also visible just before about sunrise. Jupiter will be rising in the southeastern skies as well. And Saturn will be around early in the morning. It'll be up above the eastern horizon around 1134 later on tonight. So that might be something that you can take a look at uh, in these locations out there. But most of what we're looking at at this time, again, Venus will be on the rise uh, coming up a little bit later on. It's setting right now over the area of the other skies and should be up a little bit later on. This again from timeanddate.com. The Lyrid meteor shower, we're kind of on the back side of it, but you could still catch a few of the more active meteors as we pass through that stream of meteor debris from a comet or asteroid right there. Uh, this one in case from Comet Thatcher. As we go through that, it builds up and then it drops back down again and we're kind of over on the dropping down side of things as we pass through that stream of debris. We may see the possibility of maybe a few more areas of very bright meteors out there, but nothing indicated at this point in time. What's up next for us at this time is going to be May. It's going to be a smaller shower. It's the Eta, Eta Aquarius meteor shower uh, that's going to be, again, active right about now through about May 28th, but it peaks about May 5th or 6th. So you should be able to see that. And those meteors come direct from Halley's Comet making its way around the atmosphere. And that's going to be visible in about 2061. So that hopefully will be something we can see 
anything beyond that, the next big one coming up will be the Perseids, and this one hopefully a good one, and also unfortunately it could be a problem with the moon rising and causing some visibility problems there, too much light to see things, that could be something to look at there, but uh, hopefully we'll keep you up to date on that, the, very close to around the time of the total uh, solar eclipse coming up, we'll talk about that in the near future. Here's what it looks like again for the Mid-South area for tonight, coming up within the course of about the next uh, several minutes or so, we should see again a few areas of spotty possibilities of seeing some uh, showers out there, uh, meteor shower activity out there, but really just not seeing, again, all that much going on immediately. What we've got tonight in the way of very bright conditions out there will be, once again, that Falcon 9 rocket booster. That'll be going on as we go into around the area of about 922 for tonight, rising at 922 in the west and heading upwards again, but it'll be a very short visible pass. Uh, it'll go right on into Earth's shadow at about that point. So we may see it briefly for a few seconds at best as it rises above the west and western horizon goes right through the arm of Orion toward Gemini and then poof, that's it. It's not going to be seen for very long, but that is going to be about the best possible viewing that we see from anything tonight. You notice these things on here under the brightness column, uh, when you start getting lower and lower on the numbers, that's where you see again these things that will be very bright. Now this one again, uh, this is an Atlas Centaur 2 rocket booster. It's a piece of space junk. It orbits the Earth up there. One of the things we have to get out of there just to make certain we all stay safe. This will be rising at about 10 o'clock in the evening, but the only trouble is at brightest pass, it's going to be at about a 2.9 or so, and that is so dim, you may not even be able to see that with binoculars. It may just be a little wisp of a light passing on through, so we're just not going to be able to see all that much. Now, if you want to try with some good binoculars or maybe a good mobile telescope that you can look through pretty easily and move pretty easily to see if you can see a pretty wide field of view. You might be able to see stuff like that, but it might be a little difficult to see anything at all, unfortunately, on there. Let's see if there's anything up into tomorrow morning before you get up and going. An Okean O rocket, the booster for the Okean satellite, if I'm not mistaken, for uh, the uh, Earth studies on there. North to south orbit, it'll be going right past Lyra, uh, Vega, the bright star in Lyra, at about 4.51, 4.52 in the morning when Jupiter is over on one side of the horizon and Venus is on the other. The only problem is, once again, it's going to be about a 1.6, so it will be just barely visible right before sunrise light kind of drowns all that out. So it's possible you may see something out of that, but most of what we're looking at right now is going to be just too dim to see too much of anything else happening. We'll go ahead and forward into tomorrow evening and see if there's anything else going on and as of right now the brightest thing will be another rocket booster USA 186 will be visible about 848 tomorrow night as it fades from the south goes across the sky to the north and sets right through Cassiopeia. Again, that'll be tomorrow night, but at least you have a chance to get out there and give a shot to see what may be out and about through those areas. Let's see what we have in the way of iridium flares. There's nothing scheduled for this evening. The next one will be coming up on April the 27th in about uh, two days time and a couple after that into areas of around Friday and Saturday the 28th and 29th uh, that will again be giving us the possibility of some very bright passes but nothing immediately for tonight all this courtesy of heavens-above.com great place to go to to see what's flying overhead and a good opportunity to see what's going on in the skies above you Pl uh, plug in your location and see what you've got going on for instance right now Mars is very uh, should be very visible up around around the area of Taurus, but it's still too dim to see in the sunlit skies when sunset is just barely over the horizon. So Jupiter rising in southeast, that might be a better target for you to take a look at if you want to see something there. Great article on NASA.gov if you'd like to know more about the investigation to identify unknown microbes in space. Astronaut Kate Rubin uh, was sequenced, uh, sequenced in DNA aboard the International Space Station in 2016. The first sequencing of DNA in space was part of the biomolecule sequencer investigation. It's very cool to think that a lot of science, it's basically a mobile laboratory that's going on 200 miles up and a good opportunity to look more about what is actually available out there to astronauts and how we can get more information up there. It's a very clean operating environment and how the data can be used, uh, what we can discover up there and how we can put it to good use down here on the planet. So if you'd like to see more about astronaut Rubin's uh, experimentation and stuff like that, all you have to do is go to my Twitter page, 
filing for nasa.gov and information on Twitter is available there. Also available on my own Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic uh, underscore WREG3 and you can get more information about what's going on there. I'm going to have to change that background graphic as Peter Capaldi will be saying goodbye uh, in the next few days. Also don't forget to check out my Facebook page that's available at facebook.com slash austinonic w-r-e-g. Today is World Penguin Day, so a good opportunity to learn more about the flightless waterfowl down around Antarctica and how we can participate in things like conservation and ecology. It's a great opportunity to learn more even though they may be a world away. It's a good opportunity for you sitting here in the Mid-South or wherever you're watching this from to get more details about what's going on in the Mid-South when it comes to how you can participate in things like ecology so something to think about there on this World Penguin Day. If you hadn't uh, followed that before, great opportunity to learn more. Again, stay tuned to my social media pages for a lot more. You can get all of them at the bottom of the screen in that blue bar down there, way on down toward the uh, lower portion of the screen, underneath the daylight information and moon data, the astro data that we have in the red bar. Uh, my email address going by right there as well at austin.onic at wreg.com. We'll have more coming up throughout the course of the rest of the week. Uh, not too much going on this week. Again, Fading Lyrid meteor shower, not a lot of satellites, but there's always the opportunity to get out and take a look at the night sky. Get your kids outside and take a look and see what's going on so you can get them involved in things like science and astronomy. It's too cool not to pass that up, again, just to see all that stuff going on out there that shows you a little bit more about the science that we know about and the exploration that lies ahead of us and all that neat stuff is all available. All you have to do is step outside and see how bright those stars and planets are and get your kids interested in things like astronomy. Get to a dark sky site away from city lights at some point in time. Make it a family outing. Do your best to get them interested in this because it is just too cool to make certain you don't pass this thing up. It's really interesting to see. I've been part at an amateur astronomer for numerous years and again I'd love to pass that excitement on to everybody else if at all possible. Again email address you can barely see it but it's right here. I shouldn't have worn a white shirt with white typeface but again austin.onic at wreg.com if you'd like to contact me and find out more about what's going on. I'm getting eaten up by mosquitoes so I'm going to go ahead and stop this for this evening. If you have any questions or suggestions please let me know at austin.onic.wreg.com and stay tuned to News Channel 3 for all the day's new latest news, weather and sports tonight at 10 with Jim Jaggers and tomorrow morning with News Channel 3's Todd Demers. Thanks for joining me for tonight's edition of Skyblog 3. And remember, whenever it comes to science or astronomy, always keep looking up.